Alexa, pause. Hi, besties. Welcome back. If you are new here, my name is Alexis Barber. I'm 22. I live in New York City. I work full time in big tech and I'm also a content creator. I have had such a long day and today I'm going to answer your questions about being a micro influencer. I had you all submit questions on my Instagram and we're going to go through them and I'm here to spill the tea. This is a very gatekept industry and it's something that really bothers me. So I'm here to tell you exactly what it costs to do this, what getting brand deals is like, and just to be more honest about the behind the scenes. So let's get started. So the first question is, when it comes to brand deals, how much is really your opinion and not the brand telling you what to say? So for me, this can range. So brands will usually provide you with something called a creative brief when it's time for you to shoot content for them. So in that brief, it can range from nothing, there's no brief and you just say exactly what you think, which is what a lot of my brand deals and the biggest one I've worked with have been and I think that's the most effective thing. But sometimes there will be briefs that are like, please mention these like five things that are very good about the product or be sure to say this, be sure to shoot this definitely have a side to side, like before and after all this stuff. And so it can range. I personally do not work with brands that I don't like know, use and love. Like I will work with a brand if they're an interesting brand that I've wanted to try for a long time. And then they offer, of course, like to pay me, but that's because I know it's a good product that would probably work for me as opposed to something where it's like, I've never used this before. I've never heard of this before. And it's really weird to me. So I'm just going to do it. So I would say it's a 50, 50 split between how I feel about the brand and what they are telling me to say, but usually it's just highlighting the parts of the product that they think are really important to highlight and that's completely fine because that's important. I work in marketing full-time so I have no issue showing up and doing that. When we use a 20% code from a product, how much do you make from that and does it add up? No. This depends on what brand but I don't actually make a lot of money at all from those types of things but what it does show is that you convert. So some brands if you're in an affiliate program you won't make any commission from it. For me, I am in affiliate programs where I do make commission, but I don't like pushing that because it feels really salesy. So if you use a 20% code for something, all that does for me in my situation is show the brand that I convert product. Therefore, they're going to want to continue to work with me because I have a high engagement rate, but it doesn't really add up. Now, when it comes to my Amazon storefront, for example, that does add up. So if you go to my Amazon store, if you shop the links, um, a lot of the links on my blog that are like clothes, if you shop those, that does add up. So I've made like a few hundred bucks from Amazon and from Reward Style in terms of those links, but it's still very small, I would say. How many build their own following and how many have a team from the start? So I don't know, honestly, like I honestly, my, the way I came into being an influencer is definitely different than a lot of people. So I don't know about having a team from the start, but I do know that it's easier to become an influencer when you grew up around semi-famous people or when your parents are bankrolling everything for you or when you don't have to have a full-time job in order to sustain this or you have a really interesting, fun full-time job. But I think a big part of my platform is being honest about the fact that it's expensive to have a luxury lifestyle and that even a six figure job at somewhere like Google doesn't pay for everything that you see all these people living their beautiful lavish lives in New York. It doesn't pay for all that. So I do think there's an element of privilege and money that comes with it. And so that's why some people might gain a following faster is because they happened to know a big influencer or they worked in like an agency setting and were able to use what they learned there or the people they learned there to grow faster. But I'm not super close friends with very many influencers. So timeline of a brand deal from start to finish was in between total time. So this can range. So in my experience, I will get an email from a brand and then I will respond to them and they will ask for my rates. I will negotiate my rates. I will tell them like I charge this for this. They'll send over a contract and then they'll send over the product. Then I will shoot the content, send it over to them and they will send back edits. I will either reshoot it or make edits. Then I will finally send it to them. I'll either post it. A lot of my brand contracts have been just creating content for a brand, not necessarily posting it on my platform. And then I'll send it to them and then it's all theirs. Then I will invoice them and then they will pay me. So from start to finish, like including getting paid, 
that can range from like one, the fastest I ever got paid was a two weeks and the longest I've ever gotten paid is hmm, a lot longer. So as much as I've made a lot of money from brand deals so far, I haven't actually gotten that paid out because I've invoiced these brands and it takes them forever to pay me. So that's the timeline of a brand deal. The shortest it's ever been is like a two week period. So I actually had a brand reach out to me about a week ago and their products got here on Saturday and they want me to post by Thursday. Um, so that's like, I guess like a two week turnaround, but I actually really like that brand. So it works out. The longest it's ever taken is a brand reached out to me in March to chat. We just had a quick get to know you call. And then about a month later, they reached out with an actual brief and an actual opportunity to collaborate. Then within a few weeks, I signed a contract and then the content for that will start to go live tomorrow. So good stuff. How to get started, how to even get sent promotions, starting resources. And then hardest things about getting started, horror stories, what are you still learning about? Getting started with influencing requires just a lot of consistency because you never know when you're gonna blow up. So I had a health accountability, like food wellness Instagram. I had that since March of last year. And I was posting every single day despite having 100, then 200, then like 1,000 followers. And the consistency part of it is the most important because you can't expect to blow up as soon as possible. You literally never know when a video is gonna go viral. You never know when a someone might shout you out. I hate that answer because I hate being consistent, but it just became a routine for me to post every single day. And I started making friends on Instagram through that and it worked out really well. So I would say to get started, you don't need a niche. I don't personally believe that, but it does really help. So if you start and you're just fashion, I think that'll help you grow a lot faster than if you're like me and you've just stuck to this lifestyle generalist model. I don't need a niche because I don't want to compromise any part of my personality and I want to be able to share whatever I want to share whenever I want to share it and I have a full-time job so I don't have to focus on just growth because that's not my main MO right now. My main MO is being able to share my life and be honest. So that's why I decided to stay away from a niche but if you want to blow up, a niche is definitely going to help you do that a lot faster whether it's comedy, fashion, beauty, lifestyle or like day in the life vlogs for example that'll definitely help so I would say get started and choose one or two platforms to start with so I was on Instagram and I still consider Instagram my main platform even though TikTok is where I have the most followers because Instagram is where I have the biggest community and I do think that like while TikTok is great for blowing people up Instagram is where their community really carries over because you have DMs, you have question and answer boxes, all that type of thing. So if you wanna get started in this industry, I would highly recommend you have a very clear brand on your Instagram. You show up there authentically every day and you use the other formats like TikTok to grow your audience. So if you are familiar with marketing, the marketing funnel, the marketing funnel goes like this. There's awareness, there's consideration, and then there's action. So awareness might mean, oh, someone knows uh, Brooklyn and I know Paris shoot home I know all these uh random brands consideration is you just move somewhere so you're looking for a new uh, sheet set so you know about these brands you're looking into them you might be searching them on Google and then action is actually purchasing that and so when you copy that and translate it into an influencer so the awareness is they may have seen you you know, they started following you. Consideration is they're like, oh, I like this person, I'm gonna follow them on TikTok, I'll maybe follow them on Instagram. And then action is whatever you want that action to be. So that could be engaging with you and following you so you have a great community member, which leads to you being able to take action in the form of getting brand deals. The other action could be something like shopping your affiliate links. It could be something like listening to your podcast, watching your YouTube video, buying your products. So that's an important thing to consider. And so then I put the different social platforms into one of those boxes. So I consider TikTok to be an awareness category. Yes, you can drive a lot of action through TikTok, but it's not going to lead to like consistent long-term engagement and a return. So I think to put TikTok up there, then I put Instagram in the consideration category. And then I put action in the form of podcast or YouTube, because if you're gonna take 
10 to 40 minutes to listen to me talk, that's an action. And that is something that you can monetize later on. So that's how I would think about it. I would choose the Instagram and TikTok to start. If I were start just starting out right now, like stick with TikTok. And then when you have more time and you're able to, I would move over to YouTube or a podcast because those are more sustainable. But TikTok is what's gonna help you grow your community in other areas. But I don't see it as like, as of right now, because the churn is so fast, it's a newer platform. I would say it's an incredible platform, but you never know what could happen there. So I wouldn't put all your eggs just in TikTok. Is it weird interacting with or befriending other influencers? I think it's actually way more fun to befriend other influencers because you understand each other and you are in this interesting little like under like weird circle of the internet where you can like understand what other people are doing and like taking a look at it. So Sammy and Freckled Foodie are two of my great influencer friends. And it's just great because when you're, when I'm with them, like I could actually talk for hours because we understand like what's going on. We're like looking at like everything happening in the area that we are in. So I absolutely love it. However, there are a lot of influencers, some of your faves that are just kind of rude and like not interested in me because I'm not big enough. Like I don't have 10,000 followers, so I'm not like worth their time. Even though I've been a big supporter of them or something, or we might be in the same campaign, they still like don't give me any peace of mind. And I think that's kind of off because right now to grow on Instagram, you almost never are gonna grow on Instagram organically. You're either gonna have like a real go viral or somebody repost you. And if somebody reposts you, that means that someone bigger than you had to help you get there. And so I think it's really off for you to judge someone or not be friends with someone because they have a smaller following than you because everybody started somewhere. And if you were genuinely interested in being a friend with that person, just do it, you know? So that's how I feel about it. It's not weird, I love it. I wanna have more influencer friends after, I say after the pandemic. I'm fully vaccinated. I should be after the pandemic, but you know what I mean. My daily schedule. So my daily schedule, oh my God. Oh God, so I wake up at five or six. I go on a long walk. I come back. I also have a morning routine. I have a lot of videos about this. I shoot content, do content, do DMs, do emails, contracts, all that until nine or 10. Then I go to my real nine to five till five or six. I either work out or I go back to content creation. Then either my boyfriend comes over or I hang out with friends and then I go to bed by 10 p.m. That's my basic daily schedule. But in terms of my content daily schedule, what I aim to do is post on Instagram pretty much throughout the day. I don't force myself to post in feed on Instagram because I don't actually think that helps you grow at all. If I have something good to post, I'll post it. Or if I have a brand deal, then I aim to post two TikToks a day, which is a lot more time than you would think, but that's what I aim to do. And then I aim to post a YouTube video once a week and I wanna move that up to twice a week. And then I have my podcast, which I usually do, I usually do two podcast episodes a week, but I'm on hiatus from my first season of my podcast, but it was such a great season. Like I go back and listen to some of my interviews because it's so fun. How much of your money did you spend promoting things organically before brands reached out? So I just actually started doing a TikTok series about this, but I think all in all on products, on clothes, on just having a cute apartment, on equipment, on videos, on just like looking good. I've spent like at least $10,000 to just like live like this. Thing is, most of that I probably would have spent otherwise, other than like the equipment and the um, clothes, because I probably would have like bought the, I wouldn't have bought as many clothes and returned them as I did in this instance. But that's sort of, it's a lot of money, but I have made that back, which is great. And I've gotten a lot of gifted products, but it takes a lot. To be honest, it does, it takes a lot. How do I choose which deals to take or not to take? Deciding what deals to take and what not to take, this was a hard thing for me because when I first blew up, I say blow up, but it was very small. When I first got my first 5,000 followers, I was saying yes to everything coming in my inbox because I didn't know what to do. I was saying yes to posting for free, just product for post, all this stuff. And that is, if you have over, I want to say at least like 5,000, but honestly, if you have like over 3,000 followers, you should never do anything for free. And when I say never, I mean never. Because if it's a big brand you already use, they will pay you because they can afford you. If it's not, then they are asking you to do free marketing for them and that's wrong. So I would say absolutely not. I made a matrix for myself. So I wrote out all of the brands that I actually use every single day that I love to death 
and I would say yes to you in a heartbeat. I wrote out the brands that I would do something for free for. So that's something if they were giving me a very, very expensive product or if they were to propel me to the next level, I would still negotiate. But there's some things like a mattress that it's like, me as well because that's really expensive but if i were bigger if i had like 20k or something i wouldn't do it for free so then i wrote out things that were like i'm not gonna do this unless they're gonna pay me like above my rate so there will be random like companies that slide into my email that are like would you want to do this for 200 dollars?" and it's like absolutely not like i won't do anything just for a check and i think that's because i have a full-time job that's supporting me but also because i want to remain i want to continue to have trust with my following and i will only promote it if i'm genuinely using it and loving it or if it's something that like i have always wanted to use and genuinely love and promote too so that is my advice on what brands to take and not to take don't just do things for a check because it's not worth it how do i negotiate deals is it a contract how do you protect you so i negotiate deals via email so i have my rates that cameron from freckle foodie helped me come up with i was not charging enough beforehand i was doing dumb stuff never do that like i said never do anything for free and I have my rates. If a brand emails me, I clarify them, like, is this a paid collaboration or not? If it is, I'll send over my rates. If it's not, I say, I'm sorry, I can't do product for posts, but I'm happy to accept gifting. Most of the time they won't send over the gifting, but sometimes they will. Then if we agree on a rate, then we, I will ask the brand to send over a contract. I'll sign the contract, send it back, and then they will send me the product. I will create the content and send it back. So. I negotiate by making sure that I am getting as close to my rate as possible and that if they're gonna use my content and my likeness, you've gotta charge licensing fees, which I personally charge 30% of the original rate for every month the content is used. And then if they're gonna use you in an advertisement, you are gonna need to negotiate that rate too. I've seen anything from five to 15% of the ad spend that they typically use. You should also be able to request all the metrics from whatever ads they run if they run them with your likeness. So that's how I protect myself. I always sign a contract and then I always make sure that the invoice, et cetera, is dated correctly and that they have all the information that they could possibly need. I also have an LLC, so I don't operate just as like a person, but I filed an LLC and I get all my payment through that. And then I essentially like keep that all in a separate small business bank account. I do all of my business expenses through that. And then that way I have like all my taxes, everything in one place. That way it's not, you know, an issue otherwise. How many followers to be considered to get an influence, to be an influencer and get brand deals? You could be any size follower to get brand deals, 100%, but I personally jumped from 1,000 to 6,000 followers on Instagram. And so I always, while I was waiting to become an influencer, was like 5,000 is going to make me a micro influencer. And now I'm at not even at 10,000. And I think I'm a pretty much an influencer because I have 30,000 on TikTok. So I do think having a good, a good sized following on Instagram helps me though, because funnily enough, because TikTok is such a volatile platform, I actually charge the same for a TikTok as I do for Instagram posts, even though I'm three times bigger on TikTok. And that's just because TikTok rates have not been established and influencers make a lot, a lot of money from everything that they're doing. So like I know influencers who have 20,000 followers who charge $2,000 a post. And that is like what I'm trying to get to because if you do four brand deals a month, $2,000 each, you are making eight, you're making $8,000 and you have 20,000 followers. Like, that's incredible. The other ways that you can make money as an influencer are through affiliate links, like I mentioned, are through your selling your own digital products, are through creating content for brands, but not posting it on your own profile, photography, there's tons of things you can do. I wanna know who's a bitch and who hates who in the industry, LOL. Me too. I have a few influencers that really bother me, but a lot of them are rich white girls who won't take a stand on politics or think they're too good for other people. So that is my Q&A. Thank you so much for contributing on Instagram. If you want to know more, leave a comment down below. I have another video all about how to become an, a micro-influencer if you want to check that out. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Don't forget you are too smart to not love yourself. And talk soon. Thank you.